உயரங்களுக்கு இட்டு செல்லும் என்பதற்கு இவரது வாழ்க்கை ஒரு உதாரணம் எந்த தேர்வானாலும் முதல் மாணவனாக வரும் இயல்பும் திறமையும் கொண்ட இந்த கல்வியின் காதலனுக்கு அறிவியல் தொழில்நுட்ப மையத்தின் உயர் அதிகாரியாகவும் பணியாற்றுவதற்கான மிகப்பெரும் வாய்ப்புகள் கிடைத்தன ஐநாவிலிருந்து ஓய்வு பெற்று நாடு திரும்பியதும் இயல்பான பொது வாழ்க்கையில் இனி ஈடுபடுவது என்று முடிவெடுத்த போது ஆயிரத்தி தொள்ளாயிரத்தி தொன்னூறில் அண்ணா பல்கலைக்கழகத்தில் துணைவேந்தர் பதவியும் இவருக்கு தேடி வந்தது அதன் பின்பு தமிழ்நாடு மாநில உயர்கல்வி மன்றத்தின் துணைத் தலைவர் பொறுப்பையும் ஏற்று தமிழகத்தில் உயர்கல்வியில் குறிப்பிடத்தக்க விகிதத்தில் பங்களிப்பை செய்தார் திரு அனந்த கிருஷ்ணன் கல்வியாளராக தனது வாழ்க்கை அனுபவங்கள் குறித்தும் தமிழக கல்வி சூழல் குறித்தும் மாறிவரும் கல்வி சூழலில் மாணவர்கள் பெற்றோர்கள் செய்ய வேண்டியவை குறித்தும் மனம் திறந்து பேசுகிறார் இன்றைய பேசும் தலைமையில்
கல்வியின் நாயகன் அனந்த கிருஷ்ணன் அவர்கள் வாணியம் பாடியில் மிக சாதாரண குடும்பத்தில் பிறந்தவர் கல்வி ஒருவருடைய வாழ்க்கையில் எத்தகைய அசாத்திய உயரங்களுக்கு இட்டு செல்லும் என்பதற்கு இவரது வாழ்க்கை ஒரு உதாரணம் எந்த தேர்வானாலும் முதல் மாணவனாக வரும் இயல்பும் திறமையும் கொண்ட இந்த கல்வியின் காதலனுக்கு பல ஆசிரியர்களின் உதவியும் வழிகாட்டுதலுமே ஆய்வு படிப்பிற்காக அமெரிக்கா வரை இவரை அழைத்து சென்றது ஆயிரத்தி தொள்ளாயிரத்தி ஐம்பத்தி ஆறில் பொறியியல் பட்டதாரியாக நெடுஞ்சாலை துறையில் பணியாற்றியவருக்கு ஆயிரத்தி தொள்ளாயிரத்தி அறுபதாம் ஆண்டு அமெரிக்காவில் ஆய்வு செய்து பொறியியல் துறையில் டாக்டர் பட்டம் பெறுவதற்கான வாய்ப்பு கிடைத்தது அமெரிக்காவிலேயே பல வேலை வாய்ப்புகள் கிடைத்த போதிலும் இந்தியாவிலேயே பணியாற்ற வேண்டும் என்பதுதான் டாக்டர் அனந்த கிருஷ்ணன் அவர்களின் ஆசையாக இருந்தது புகழ் வாய்ந்த கான்பூர் ஐஐடியில் ஆசிரியராக சேர்ந்து அதன் வளர்ச்சியில் முழுமையாக ஈடுபடுத்திக் கொண்ட இவர் அதன் பின்பு இந்திய தூதரகத்தில் அறிவியல் ஆலோசகராகவும் ஐநாவில் அறிவியல் தொழில்நுட்ப மையத்தின் உயர் அதிகாரியாகவும் பணியாற்றுவதற்கான மிக பெரும் வாய்ப்புகள் கிடைத்தன ஐநாவிலிருந்து ஓய்வு பெற்று நாடு திரும்பியதும் இயல்பான பொது வாழ்க்கையில் இனி ஈடுபடுவது என்று முடிவெடுத்த போது ஆயிரத்தி தொள்ளாயிரத்தி தொன்னூறில் அண்ணா பல்கலைக்கழகத்தில் துணைவேந்தர் தவியும் இவருக்கு தேடி வந்தது அதன் பின்பு தமிழ்நாடு மாநில உயர்கல்வி மன்றத்தின் துணைத் தலைவர் பொறுப்பையும் ஏற்று தமிழகத்தில் உயர்கல்வியில் குறிப்பிடத்தக்க விகிதத்தில் பங்களிப்பை செய்தார் திரு அனந்த கிருஷ்ணன் கல்வியாளராக தனது வாழ்க்கை அனுபவங்கள் குறித்தும் தமிழக கல்வி சூழல் குறித்தும் மாறிவரும் கல்வி சூழலில் மாணவர்கள் பெற்றோர்கள் செய்ய வேண்டியவை குறித்தும் மனம் திறந்து பேசுகிறார் இன்றைய பேசும் தலைமையில்
நாயகன் அனந்த கிருஷ்ணன் அவர்கள் வாணியும் பாடியில் மிக சாதாரண குடும்பத்தில் பிறந்தவர் கல்வி ஒருவருடைய வாழ்க்கையில் எத்தகைய அசாத்திய உயரங்களுக்கு இட்டு செல்லும் என்பதற்கு இவரது வாழ்க்கை ஒரு உதாரணம் எந்த தேர்வானாலும் முதல் மாணவனாக வரும் இயல்பும் திறமையும் கொண்ட இந்த கல்வியின் காதலனுக்கு பல ஆசிரியர்களின் உதவியும் வழிகாட்டுதலுமே ஆய்வு படிப்பிற்காக அமெரிக்கா வரை இவரை அழைத்து சென்றது ஆயிரத்தி தொள்ளாயிரத்தி ஐம்பத்தி ஆறில் பொறியியல் பட்டதாரியாக நெடுஞ்சாலை துறையில் பணியாற்றியவருக்கு ஆயிரத்தி தொள்ளாயிரத்தி அறுபதாம் ஆண்டு அமெரிக்காவில் ஆய்வு செய்து பொறியியல் துறையில் டாக்டர் பட்டம் பெறுவதற்கான வாய்ப்பு கிடைத்தது அமெரிக்காவிலேயே பல வேலை வாய்ப்புகள் கிடைத்த போதிலும் இந்தியாவிலேயே பணியாற்ற வேண்டும் என்பதுதான் டாக்டர் அனந்த கிருஷ்ணன் அவர்களின் ஆசையாக இருந்தது புகழ் வாய்ந்த கான்பூர் ஐஐடியில் ஆசிரியராக சேர்ந்து அதன் வளர்ச்சியில் முழுமையாக ஈடுபடுத்திக் கொண்ட இவர் அதன் பின்பு இந்திய தூதரகத்தில் அறிவியல் ஆலோசகராகவும் ஐநாவில் அறிவியல் தொழில்நுட்ப மையத்தின் உயர் அதிகாரியாகவும் பணியாற்றுவதற்கான மிக பெரும் வாய்ப்புகள் கிடைத்தன ஐநாவிலிருந்து ஓய்வு பெற்று நாடு திரும்பியதும் இயல்பான பொது வாழ்க்கையில் இனி ஈடுபடுவது என்று முடிவெடுத்த போது ஆயிரத்தி தொள்ளாயிரத்தி தொன்னூறில் அண்ணா பல்கலைக்கழகத்தில் துணைவேந்தர் பதவியும் இவருக்கு தேடி வந்தது அதன் பின்பு தமிழ்நாடு மாநில உயர்கல்வி மன்றத்தின் துணைத் தலைவர் பொறுப்பையும் ஏற்று தமிழகத்தில் உயர்கல்வியில் குறிப்பிடத்தக்க விகிதத்தில் பங்களிப்பை செய்தார் திரு அனந்த கிருஷ்ணன் கல்வியாளராக தனது வாழ்க்கை அனுபவங்கள் குறித்தும் தமிழக கல்வி சூழல் குறித்தும் மாறிவரும் கல்வி சூழலில் மாணவர்கள் பெற்றோர்கள் செய்ய வேண்டியவை குறித்தும் மனம் திறந்து பேசுகிறார் இன்றைய பேசும் தலைமையில்
கல்வியின் நாயகன் அனந்த கிருஷ்ணன் அவர்கள் வாணியும் பாடியில் மிக சாதாரண குடும்பத்தில் பிறந்தவர் கல்வி ஒருவருடைய வாழ்க்கையில் எத்தகைய அசாத்திய உயரங்களுக்கு இட்டு செல்லும் என்பதற்கு இவரது வாழ்க்கை ஒரு உதாரணம் எந்த தேர்வானாலும் முதல் மாணவனாக வரும் இயல்பும் திறமையும் கொண்ட இந்த கல்வியின் காதலனுக்கு பல ஆசிரியர்களின் உதவியும் வழிகாட்டுதலுமே ஆய்வு படிப்பிற்காக அமெரிக்கா வரை இவரை அழைத்து சென்றது ஆயிரத்தி தொள்ளாயிரத்தி ஐம்பத்தி ஆறில் பொறியியல் பட்டதாரியாக நெடுஞ்சாலை துறையில் பணியாற்றியவருக்கு ஆயிரத்தி தொள்ளாயிரத்தி அறுபதாம் ஆண்டு அமெரிக்காவில் ஆய்வு செய்து பொறியியல் துறையில் டாக்டர் பட்டம் பெறுவதற்கான வாய்ப்பு கிடைத்தது அமெரிக்காவிலேயே பல வேலை வாய்ப்புகள் கிடைத்த போதிலும் இந்தியாவிலேயே பணியாற்ற வேண்டும் என்பதுதான் டாக்டர் அனந்த கிருஷ்ணன் அவர்களின் ஆசையாக இருந்தது புகழ் வாய்ந்த கான்பூர் ஐஐடியில் ஆசிரியராக சேர்ந்து அதன் வளர்ச்சியில் முழுமையாக ஈடுபடுத்திக் கொண்ட இவர் அதன் பின்பு இந்திய தூதரகத்தில் அறிவியல் ஆலோசகராகவும் ஐநாவில் அறிவியல் தொழில்நுட்ப மையத்தின் உயர் அதிகாரியாகவும் பணியாற்றுவதற்கான மிக பெரும் வாய்ப்புகள் கிடைத்தன ஐநாவிலிருந்து ஓய்வு பெற்று நாடு திரும்பியதும் இயல்பான பொது வாழ்க்கையில் இனி ஈடுபடுவது என்று முடிவெடுத்த போது ஆயிரத்தி தொள்ளாயிரத்தி தொன்னூறில் அண்ணா பல்கலைக்கழகத்தில் துணைவேந்தர் பதவியும் இவருக்கு தேடி வந்தது அதன் பின்பு தமிழ்நாடு மாநில உயர்கல்வி மன்றத்தின் துணைத் தலைவர் பொறுப்பையும் ஏற்று தமிழகத்தில் உயர்கல்வியில் குறிப்பிடத்தக்க விகிதத்தில் பங்களிப்பை செய்தார் திரு அனந்த கிருஷ்ணன் கல்வியாளராக தனது வாழ்க்கை அனுபவங்கள் குறித்தும் தமிழக கல்வி சூழல் குறித்தும் மாறிவரும் கல்வி சூழலில் மாணவர்கள் பெற்றோர்கள் செய்ய வேண்டியவை குறித்தும் மனம் திறந்து பேசுகிறார் இன்றைய பேசும் தலைமையில் A very good evening everyone. May I request all the dignitaries to please come to the dais.
request all the dignitaries to please come to the dais. I request all the dignitaries to please come to the dais. I request the audience to keep their mobile phones on silent mode throughout the session, please. Audience, please put your mobile phones on the silent mode. A very good evening all. I request everyone to rise for the invocation, the Tamil Thai Vart. Sirarum vadana menar tigar barada kandamidil. Tekkanamum nadi siranda dravidanal tirinadum. Takka sirapire nudalum taritanarum tilagamume. Attilaga vasane pola netulagum nimba mura. Yet the same Pugal Manaka in the Perum Tamil and Engay Tamil and Engay Unsi Rilamay Tirambi and the Sayal Maran the Varta Dome Varta Dome Varta Dome Anna University is organizing Dr. M. Anandakrishnan Memorial Day in remembrance of his first death anniversary today. I now invite Dr. L. Suganti, Dean, College of Engineering, Anna University, to deliver the welcome address. Respected Vice Chancellor of Anna University, Dr. Vail Raj. Respecter Professor Dr. Sadiq, former Vice Chancellor of Madras University, my mentor, respected Professor Dr. T. R. Jagadisan, former Dean and Director, College of Engineering, Gindi, President of Alumni Association of CEG Engineer, Mr. M. V. Rupchandar, members of Professor Anandakrishnan's family, Mr. Satyamuthi Anandakrishnan, Mrs. Jayalakshmi Anandakrishnan, Respected Registrar Dr. Ravi Kumar, former and current faculty members, distinguished guests, student friends, and guests, good evening to one and all present here. I welcome you all to this August gathering. I would like to welcome our Vice Chancellor, Dr. Vailrad, sir, who has been the brain behind this 
function. Uh, he has been organizing this function in a very uh, warm manner, inviting every individual uh, as a function in his home. I welcome, I extend a very warm welcome to the members of Professor Anandha Krishnan's family, his extended family, his colleagues, his family friends for this momentous occasion. A legend is someone who leaves behind an unforgettable impression on others. They touch lives, they are remembered, they are cherished. There are scores of legends who have lived among us. Among those legends, those with clear differences in patterns of thinking, feeling, and behaving are referred as legendary personalities. These are highly esteemed people in our society. And a very few of such legendary personalities are considered to be legendary leaders. These are people whose footprints, footsteps remain a history and continue to guide people even after their demise. Today, we have gathered here to celebrate the life of one such legendary leader and alumnus of College of Engineering, Ginty, and former Vice Chancellor of Anna University, late Dr. M. Krishnan, on the occasion of his first Memorial Day. We all know that he was a Padma Shri awardee, past chairman of Board of Governors of IIT Kanpur, and former Vice Chancellor of Anna University from 1990 to 1996. And we have legendary personalities on stage to talk more about the legendary leader, Dr. M. Anandakrishnan. On my, on my part, I would like to share two important points as a welcome note. Those two are his major contributions to the two great institutions he had served, namely Anna University and IIT Kanpur. In Anna University, we have seen him as a student and later as a faculty. One thing that attracted me about him is his desire to bring in transparency in governance. He introduced many changes in the system, like e-governance. But one major thing that stands out in the history of Anna University is single window system for engineering admissions throughout Tamil Nadu. It was a unique, innovative initiative that brought in transparency in engineering admissions. It has become very popular and many states started following. In 2014, when the award of Institute Fellow was conferred on him by IIT Kanpur, the citation presented the following sentence. As the chairman of the Board of Governors, Dr. M. Anandakrishnan diffused a number of difficult situations with a patient hearing to all the sides and arriving at a decision which was acceptable to everyone. His motto was caring and caring for people. Transparency and governance, carrying people along, were his two standpoints which I took from his, my experience with him when I joined this college during 1992 as a lecturer. I'm sure we are here to hear more about Sir and to take that into our life. Once again, I welcome you all and thank you all for gracing this momentous occasion. Thank you. Thank you, Madam. It is now time for felicitations. We take great pride and honor in felicitating the dignitaries present here. First, I request our Honorable Vice Chancellor, Sir, Professor R. Vailraj, to felicitate Mrs. J. Lakshmi Anandakrishnan, who has graced the occasion by her presence. Please, Sir. Request of our Honorable Vice Chancellor, sir, to honor Mr. Satyamurthy Anandakrishnan, son of the late Professor Mr. Anandakrishnan, sir.
Thank you, sir. Next, our Vice Chancellor will now felicitate Professor S. Sadiq, former Vice Chancellor, University of Madras. Sir has also served as the Dean of the MIT campus and he proudly recollects that. Thank you, sir. I next request our Vice Chancellor, sir, to felicitate Professor T.R. Jagadeesan, former Director, College of Engineering, Gindi Anna University. Thank you, sir. Please be seated. Our Vice Chancellor is a leader par excellence, the guiding force of our university, an academician in the true sense of the term, and even more. I now request Professor R. Railraj, the Honorable Vice Chancellor, Anna University, to deliver the presidential address. Very good afternoon. I am very happy to join with Dr. Shugandhi in welcoming all the members who have assembled here to share the memories of Professor M. Ananda Krishnan along with their family members, with his family members. It's a <clears throat> last week, last no, some two weeks ago, when our alumni president came to our room. We shared the thoughts of, we shared our thoughts about Dr. Ananda Krishnan. Then they mentioned about the family members have come on 18th for the ceremony of the first year memorial, that is Memorial Day. Then immediately we have planned why, why we should not gather here in Anna University because such a person, he has done a lot of things to, not only to Anna University, for the whole country. His contribution is immense. Whenever we talk with anyone about Professor Anandha Krishnan, immediately the next word coming is a visionary leader, visionary. That point immediately struck my mind and immediately we, along with the alumni members, we thought uh, we should invite all our professors and all known members of his family members, we should invite and uh, share our thoughts about him to recall whatever he has done, this great personality has done. So, Thondir Pukhaladu Thondukha, in the Valluvan Vaakku Kerpa, Thondathir and Varadangal, in the Ulagil Vandu, Nereya Sadhanekalai Padithavar, Dr. Ananda Krishna. Kadamayai Chai, Valanai Yedir Parkade. Towards this statement, he is the right person who has done, he, would, he didn't expect anything, for whatever he has done. So I can, uh, I want to recall some of the incidents. During his tenure only, I joined as a lecturer in this university. There are so many things about him during his tenure as vice chancellor. He has done a lot of contribution to this university. The first, the major contribution he has done is the single window admission, which he has brought in this university, which was appreciated by the whole country and many of the states after I was here for the last 32, 30 years and as a student two years, these 32 years I'm seeing a lot of things because of his initiative. These many states officials, they came to Anna University and how this single window is uh, being executed, then they learned and that was executed in various states. That was his first uh, brainchild. And uh, during his tenure, when I joined, I want to share some two personal experience to show his uh, visionary character. During his tenure, I joined in 92 as lecturer in this university. Within two years, I got one scholarship to pursue my doctoral study in Germany. Then I immediately, somebody told uh, 
you have joined very recently only after 5 years one can go for go to abroad for uh, higher studies some long term leave you can take after 5 uh, years only then i directly went and approached uh, went and asked uh, vice chancellor with a letter and he has seen the letter immediately okay there is a benefit but there are lot of indirect benefit to anna university i am approving immediately he told that indirect benefit uh, i couldn't uh, imagine that time what is the indirect benefit and now i have realized because of the two years stay uh, my stay in germany how it's benefited in different ways about teaching in teaching and getting projects from various places all this he immediately within a minute he could uh, realize that his uh, young age a two year stay in germany will be very definitely will be useful for this university i am here because of that momentarily he signed maybe because of that only i am here today now as vice chancellor but he could uh, forecast that immediately within a few seconds he didn't uh, he understood within a minute and uh, okay there is an ind- that word till it's remembering in my mind so immediately he signed like that another benefit i got is uh, during his tenure he st- established one center au frg institute for cat cam that time that our mechanical department uh, this uh, design division professors have a lot of uh, that is uh, powerful professors that division was uh, having lot of senior professors uh, with a uh, good very good knowledge in some fields like cat cam and he encouraged that and he brought some fund from german government and he established that center okay german government had some vision of establishing this center this center at anna university for their long term benefit so that human resources will be developed in this part of the country they can bring their automobile and other industries only if for manpower is there in this part of this country they also won the game but he encouraged that and he started with the help of all our design department professors they all also contributed a lot for the development of this design division i later later part of time in 2010 i got an opportunity to serve as director in this center for 3 years then i could understand and imagine a visionary leader has started this uh, i uh, this center and i got an opportunity to serve and many times i who has put the seed for this i should be thankful so definitely that whatever he has put it, uh, it helped a lot in many ways i can say the even in anna iit they can produce lot of engineers with the powerful knowledge but this center the contribution to the several industries is very high when compared to the contribution done by iit this center has done lot of help because of that professors from design engineering department professor ramayan professor chandrasekhar who are here and dr jabraj they are the people who have contributed a lot for the development of this institute later i am proud to say that i also got an opportunity to serve in this report this center uh, which i uh, during this period i promoted this computational fluid dynamics uh, software promotion also i did it's a very good initiative like that he has started several centers which are not there in iit this biomedical biomedical electronics center for biomedical electronics and few centers he has started which is a unique in anna university which is not there in in iit system only department is there in anna university we have a unique concept of uh, creating centers but very recently only even other other institute universities and iit started this concept of centers in these centers the kind of research like kind of training activities kind of consultancy work which is very large when compared to even iit in that particular field and uh, he has contributed a lot not only in anna university and uh, i our chief guest today he could not come mr udayachandran special secretary to chief minister initially he told 3:30 he was uh, he was about to come but later uh, that is why there was a delay initially but later uh, due to some preoccupation he couldn't come through him i came to know that he has done lot of contribution to the tamil tamil inayathalam through this he has contributed a lot several many people from the tamil uh, diaspora they are talking about him that i later I, the, the very recently only i came to know his contribution to the tamil and to iit kanpur also he served for 10 years 
he served as chairman and uh, today only i came to know that uh, one point of time itself he he was holding some committee chairman as 36 committees <laughs> so 36 committee he was holding that means how much uh, contribution he would have developed to the country through various means so in the last uh, some 15 uh, 2015 to 2020 Uh, for a different project purpose i used to go to delhi and come back some three or four times i met him during my return journey from delhi to at this that is at the age of from 85 to 90 some three to four times i met in the same flight i have met and it was shocking for me how at this age he is doing all these service it was, it was very amazing so such a wonderful personality that we got anna university is also fortunate to have a such a nice personality to serve as uh, uh, vice chancellor in this university i usually assume that he made lot of system that system is holding the name of the anna university till now that is because of his contribution during the period of that for his tenure as vice chancellor for a period of 6 uh, years definitely he lived for 92 years 92 years he lived as thiruvalluvar pointed out thondin pugalodu thonduga other ketar bol he lived 92 years 92 years he lived that and very the reason uh, his visit to anna university is 2019 i feel 2019 he came and inaugurated our uh, alumni center alumni center he came and inaugurated and uh, it was a very good initiative our professor uh, uh, vice chancellor dr surappa he initiated this alumni center and it is going to give lot of contribution in the coming days like how iit alumni center is functioning the same way though we have alumni association four such association anna university ceg mit ac tech and sc sab one common center which will be operated by the university he established and he inaugurated and uh, we are going to establish this center in a big way shortly that will emerge because a very good personality has put a seed definitely it will come in a, a large way and there are so many things uh, we can tell like this but what i found he, wherever he is there in short form wherever he, any many people will have hidden agenda during their execution of any work but he has only one hidden agenda wherever he has to develop that institute wherever he is heading other than that he has no other hidden agenda because whatever he, whatever he did we could see there is nothing without any expectation he did that is what that is what the growth is there throughout is uh, wherever he contributed and uh, the word i i have sent uh, this uh, this invitation to many people many people immediately responded a visionary leader the only one word that uh, it confirmed what i thought was also correct that gave a very good confirmation that he is a very good leader and uh, initially i didn't expect that i am conducting a small function because it is our duty but uh, now i feel if i would not have conducted it's a very mistake that uh, that luckily i initiated because of alumni members when they came i initiated if i would not have done this uh, function it is a great mistake i feel and uh, fortunately i also got, god has given a direction to conduct this because uh, such a personality should be rewarded that is why this has came to my mind and i thank uh, i am i am very happy to see all the former professors of anna university mostly i am seeing the professors uh, who worked as uh, leaders during his tenure and also who joined during his tenure also here and i thank all the professors who have come to Uh, to to give a honor to their family members whatever they have, he has contributed in an efficient way i thank once again for their family members for their uh, presence and uh, I, their family members uh, i would like to uh, mrs jayalakshmi anandakrishnan mr satyamurthy anandakrishnan and uh, mrs vasantha she has also come and uh, through online there are so many people are viewing his four sons one son is only here three other bro- his brothers are in us they are, hope they will be viewing through online and uh, i thank them also and uh, oh, one of his uh, 
நீ சுமாதேவி டாட்டர் இன் லா உமாதேவி ரவி ஹி ஹி ஹஸ் கிவன் எ போயம் தட் ஆல்சோ வில் பி ரெட் பை அவர் அலுமினி மெம்பர் அண்ட் ஐ தேங்க் ஆல் தி ஐ வுட் ஐ தேங்க் ஆல் தியர் ஃபேமிலி மெம்பர்ஸ் ஃபார் இஸ் ஒண்டர்ஃபுல் கான்ட்ரிபியூஷன் ஹி ஹஸ் மேட் டு அண்ணா யூனிவர்சிட்டி அண்ட் ஆல்சோ டு தி நேஷன் அவர் நேஷன் ஆல்சோ ஹஸ் அப்ரிஷியேட்டட் ஹிஸ் கான்ட்ரிபியூஷன் த்ரூ திஸ் பத்மா விருது பத்மா விருது definitely he will be honored much more whatever he has done hope that the days will come he will be honored even after his death the country will honor him in a better way i thank once again for all the members who have come to honor their family members thank you one one sir thank you sir you have highlighted the fact that a true re- a true leader creates several other leaders and professor ananda krishnan sir has had an indelible impact on many lives we next have mr mv roopchandar the president of alumni association of ceg who will share his thoughts and recollections from the time he spent with the professor respected uh, vice chancellor professor r velraj professor s sadik professor t r jagdishan family members of dr anandakrishnan uh, mr j lakshmi anandakrishnan his son satyamurthy anandakrishnan and mrs vasantha registrar of anna university and dean of cg professors students a good evening to one and all it's a great honor to talk Reminiscences of uh, Padma Shri Dr. M. Anandakrishnan, Distinguished Alumnus of College of Engineering, Gindi. He was a very simple, soft-spoken, technocrat, educationist who brought in educational reforms to our state, country, and also to a global context. College of Engineering, Gindi was very close to him and he attended almost all the programs whenever we invited him and that was his top priority from a president of his alumni association i just want to bring in i uh, want to bring in two points he was instrumental for constructing our alumni building here at the center and in the campus when he immediately took over as a vice chancellor in the year 1990 and when the building was coming up the the understanding was almost all the buildings uh, in our college should be three should be planned for three storied and not less than that we understand that there was a shortage of funds and he immediately made necessary arrangements to organize for funds from anna university as a loan and it was again paid back by our alumni see these are some of the points that we could can you know collect some uh, uh, from of our old records uh, so i'm just reading it out and uh, my understanding is he was always focusing on the building and wanted to ensure that the building gets completed within a year and that building got completed on 30th august 1991 within a year's period as what he planned and that building is a landmark today in our campus Uh, which has a seminar hall conference room office guest rooms dining hall which uh, facilitates all alumni and students and professors of college of engineering gindi and anna university uh, so first of all i it's my privilege and i have to thank you to make this happen and at the same time i would like to thank dr jagadishan also in this particular records his name is also there was also with him as a director to make this happen so i would like to thank each one of you and the family members to have uh, happen and this is a very prime uh, building today and uh, the greatness is whoever comes there to you know to be uh, vice chancellors of any college to be interviewed by governor i understand they come and stay here to that extent they come here and they have told me your uh, alumni center is very lucky and we are able to get that uh, think so many of them have told him and uh, i am very thankful and i had an occasion to meet him 
a uh, few times when he was the chairperson for celebrating uh, 225th year, uh, anniversary of CEG. So we had a couple of meetings and he had a lot of plans he was, uh, he was mentioning and then uh, what we wanted to do. Uh, the reason is he wanted to bring out the College of Engineering traditions and the glory to the whole world. Okay, so that was the spirit behind it. And uh, he had, uh, it, it, it was almost in the year 2019. Okay, he had twice come there and he had a discussion and uh, most of things uh, went on. But unfortunately, that program could not be carried out. Now I request our vice chancellor to, to have the celebrations at least during our uh, 230th year, which is a year ahead uh, for us. And maybe some of the buildings uh, can be named after him, uh, know him and a lot of things can, can happen during the period. So most of our alumni, when we are discussing about uh, uh, Padma Shri, Dr. Ananda Krishnan, all of our alumni wanted this total program to be organized. So maybe we met our VC and he readily accepted this invitation and he said uh, it, is, it is good to for the Anna University itself to have such a program and that is why we are all seated today. Sir, we are very much thankful for you to organize this program and make this happen. Uh, so uh, Alumni Association will remember Dr. Ananda Krishnan's uh, name forever and it will be in the records. And I thank once again for his family members to spare so much of his time for the love and affection for the college and for the university, what he had. And thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Professor S. Sadiq, former Vice Chancellor, University of Madras, will now share a few memories and reminisce on his good friend, Professor M. Ananda Krishnan. It is our privilege, sir, to have you today among us, and I warmly welcome you to deliver the felicitation address. <coughs> Respected Mrs. Ananda Krishnan, and my dear colleagues and friends on the dais, my colleagues and friends in the audience. I am very greatly privileged to have been called to stand before you to pay the homage to Dr. Ananda Krishnan. I was also privileged earlier during his 90th birthday celebration to talk about him. Most of you would have been there. Even then, I would like to repeat a few points. I was all the while wondering whether his name is Ananda Krishnan or Ananda Krishnan. Ananda Krishnan means bliss. Ananda Krishnan means eternal. There is no end. Today, I would like to join these two together that he is eternal in bliss. That's how I think. My name was in the panel along with Dr. Ananda Krishnan for the Vice Chancellorship. Dr. Malcolm Adhisesriya phoned me that if Ananda Krishnan does not come, I have recommended to the governor that you must be appointed. Normally, I had been chairman and Mr. Swaminathan had been chairman in selecting the panel. We never write like that. If so-and-so does not come, the other person must be appointed. No one writes. This only Dr. Malcolm Adhisesriya, who wrote that thing and phoned me and told that if he does not come, you will be the Vice Chancellor of the Anna University. 
my friend dr prasadam told me that that month if i remember correct 6 of the month there is a reception wedding reception in chennai if he is going to join anna university he will appear in that reception then we could decide whether he joins or not he came i was not disappointed because uh, i was expecting but i was not disappointed immediately after he joined i had some work in my village so i went there everybody started gossiping that he is angry he when i say he i am i am angry that i was not appointed as vice chancellor so i have gone home it is not so because of an urgent work i went there and came back dr arna krishnan has been waiting for my return he wanted to go to mit and to go around and visit but he did not like to go to mit without me so he was waiting so the very moment i came here the next day he called me asked me to sit by his side in the car both of us were traveling towards mit all those people who were gossiping now they were wondering what is, what has happened we thought dr sadik is angry with dr ananda krishnan and now they are sitting side by side and they are going to mit and uh, i worked under him only 6 months all the 6 years my dear friend tr jagdish and had been with him but i was there only for 6 months if i want to say he wanted to get me out as soon as possible when i say get me out for something good that's important <clears throat> so on 10th of 1990 november one of my well wisher asked kalanjan whether i have any chance to have a vice chancellor post that gentleman was in the opposition at that time but they were friends and kalanjan said he is in the list but not for the madras university madras university is a difficult university he should not go and fail if he fail it is a damage to him damage to people who have recommended damage to chief minister himself and i will not put him in the madras university <clears throat> but on 13th of that month november 1990 there was a meeting in mit one year before i have left mit and came here as a pg dean so that's a, that many people do not know i was also for one and a half years here dean in mit earlier one and a half years later nine and a half years 11 years i have spent in mit four years as a professor here i said professor one and a half year and then one and a half year as a dean so i have spent in the same campus i have stood in the same podium and talked many times so when i became vice chancellor of the madras university i was pg dean that post is not there now pg dean was created only for kulandi sami and it was continuing for some time so i was uh, one of those people sitting in that seat so in that meeting kalanjan came and perasuri ral came to open a building in mit i was in the audience in the first row at that time dr anand krishnan started praising me in front of these two important people one is education minister another is chief minister praising me that this building was started by dr sadik when he was here in 11 months time it has been finished 
was one, one of death by the chief minister. We have delayed it by one year. Otherwise, the building was finished much earlier. More than that, he also mentioned that all the furnitures for the auditorium has been bought on the first day itself when the building was uh, started, construction. Many of you might not know, in this hall, for 30 long years, there were no chairs. So we will cancel class and ask the students to carry the chairs here. And also, we will not permit the students to go out because we want the audience also. It is Kalanidhi who made this hall so beautiful and the hall chairs he only made. Kalanidhi academically may not be very much prized, amazed, but the whole surrounding and this building he made it and even the main building he painted. For a long time it was not painted. So, when he was mentioning all these things, that already the chairs are in place on the day when the opening ceremony is conducted today. So, here is the person who was involved in it like that. At that moment, Pera Sriyar and CM Kalanjar, they started talking to each other. I did not know what they are talking. After some time, I went home to Tirnal Valley. When I went to get permission from Dr. Ananda Krishnan, he said, why do you go at this time? I did not understand what he means. But when I arrived in my village, the next day, I, it was announced that I have become my chancellor at the Madras University. So, it is the input by Dr. Ananda Krishnan, not only in the stage, but also privately to the two ministers, Chief Minister and the Education Minister. Because Dr. Ananda Krishnan felt that I could manage better Madras University and I must be appointed. So, Kalanjar also changed his mind. Because he has managed the MIT for a long time, he has got enough experience. And uh, I could be appointed there and we went there. So, I lastly met in two occasions. One in his 90th birthday, I was talking how Mrs. Ananda Krishnan saved him from the ruffians who went to his home. home to just beat him. He was with a banyan and dhoti. He was just watering the garden. So when the people went there and asked, where is the vice chancellor? This great lady said that he has just now, he has gone in the car. Did you not see? So they just went out to see, whereas another person was still watering there and he was saved. So, for uh, Dr. Ananda Krishnan, there has been a lady with him for all his success. And the next time, the first year memorial of Dr. Kalanjar, that is even today, all speeches, speeches of all of us are found in the YouTube even today. Educationalists pay homage to Kalanjar. If you go to that uh, YouTube, you could find that. He was uh, presiding. Ten, uh, ten vice chancellors were speaking on that day. That uh, video is available, public as well as with us. And he was a king. He was not just a king, but he was a kingmaker. That's very important. He was able to make many people to grow. That's very important. And 
our Vice Chancellor was uh, mentioning some of the in incidences. He was uh, always smiling, always smiling like that. That is the trademark of Dr. Ananda Krishnan, always smiling. Even last time I said that when I went to Madras University, they wanted to take a photo. That was one studio called the Temple Studio or something like that. That photographer took one hour to make me smile. That's it. So after one hour, he said, somehow I got some smiling photo of yours and I could manage. But ready smile always, doctor. That made everybody to love him. Even before you place the problem to him, you are ensured that the problem will be solved by his smile itself. And he was versatile. There is no field that he cannot manage in any field. I used to say in kindergarten he studied. And he was a vice chancellor in the same Kindy College. He worked in Kanpur. He became the chairman of Kanpur Indian of Science, Indian Indian of Technology. And uh, anywhere in India, you go and mention his name, everybody knows in the professional and the educational area. And uh, you will see a school nearby, Anna Jam School. It's a contribution by Dr. Ananda Krishnan. In those days, we used to screen films in this place. All quadruplum kids will come here and crowd. Then he saw that those kids are just roaming around without any education. That was striking his mind. And he said that some school nearby must be started. That is how Anna Jam school was started. Whether Kotrupuram students are joining there or not, that's a different, but he wanted a school nearby. That's how it went. And also, he was mentioning about the alumni club. I don't know whether the building that you have, alumni building also within the campus. You mean that? Whereas alumni club, the board club, Kulande Sami was tooth and nail opposing that. I was also joining him because it will become a place for drinking mostly. That's how both of us were opposing. But the boating canal was government land. If we don't occupy it, it will go to the government again. So when uh, Ananda Krishnan took over as Vice Chancellor, Professor Hegde, he is a continuous drinker, but not a drunkard. And uh, he convinced Dr. Ananda Krishnan, and the club was started there. Even today, that's a landmark. That's a landmark. And uh, though we are not having the boating nowadays, but uh, that alumni club has become a landmark in Chennai City for conducting professional meetings and conferences and all. Therefore, there is no place that we cannot left unturned, the stone unturned. He was appointed by Kalanjar, but the later government chose him to frame the curriculum for the school students. Even in his uh, uh, CV, curriculum every day, he has mentioned out of the four interesting areas, one area is science for children. Science for children, that was the one interesting area, professional interesting area. This uh, biodata was given to me in 2000, 22 years before. Even there, so many things are there. Now after that, 
20 and odd years, he has added more to his cap. The chairman of the IIT Kanpur, the chairman of the curriculum development for school children here in Tamil Nadu, and so many other things he has added. I have been all the while friendly, <coughs> except in few occasions. And uh, as a vice chancellor, I wanted some land that is uh, belonging to the uh, uh, A.C. Chetyar's College. <coughs> but there was a feeling that if buildings are built there, this main building will be hidden. That's what they wanted to leave that as playground only, no building there. But I did not go to the committee, except that I told the governor to form a committee and leave it. I did not go there. And one vice chancellor, our Dr. Sivalingam, to represent Anna University, and Sandapa to represent Madras University, Kartigayan, the great administrator to be the chairman, the committee decided to give the land to Madras University for building. Now you see that chemistry building, very big building has been built there. At that time, he was very angry with me, not face to face, but he has been just shouting at uh, me that uh, I went from Anna University and I am doing all this Russian through him or to Anna University. But I cannot do throw him to Madras University because I am a university vice chancellor. But another time, I saw him having very great angry. Other times I have not seen him angry. Once in the campus, before I became vice chancellor, campus uh, meeting was there and he attended that. And the gentleman, who wanted to represent to the Vice Chancellor that he must do some help about the bus trip and the routes and all, that if he helps our staff who are in the quarters will be very much help, they will be uh, help, helpful, it will be helpful to them. But at that time the, the bridge was not open. So bus is up there and it will come back only here. He would have just stopped with that thing, but he said one thing that white chancellors go very comfortably in the cars, but we have to go in the crowded bus. That time, Dr. Anandakistan got very angry. And when his turn came to speak, he spoke so angrily against that person and said, why not you become a vice chancellor and go comfortably rather than sit here too long in the quarters and talk all nonsense like that. He was angry. And he was a versatile person. Anywhere he will fit. Not in difference in ages, not difference in gender, not difference in the education. Anywhere he could come down to the level of people and talk to them sensibly and usefully. That's the kind of person we had. And uh, even today, I never feel that we have missed him. I feel all the while that uh, he's with us. So that feeling, I think, will go for ever with me and I'll be with him and he'll be with me for ever. And I am very much privileged to talk about Dr. Arnakrishnan, the great versatile person on this occasion. And thank you. Thank you.
Thank you, sir. Your fond memories of Professor Ananda Krishnan from the yester years are all a great inspiration to us. Next, we have Professor T. R. Jagadishan, former director, College of Engineering, Gindi Anna University, who has been very instrumental in designing and implementing academic ventures that have contributed to much what we are today. We are very proud to welcome you, sir, to deliver the felicitation address. Mrs. Sanita Krishnan, I think I can call you as Jayaka, which I used to call 45 years ago in Washington. Uh, distinguished Vice Chancellor, uh, Dr. Vail Raj, my respected good friend, former colleague, and former Vice Chancellor of University of Madras, Dr. Sadek, the President of Alumni Association, Mr. Roop Chanda, uh, beloved son of uh, Dr. Andakrishnan, Satyamurti, distinguished Dean of uh, College of Engineering, Gindi, and I was the first Dean of College of Engineering, Gindi. I'm proud to have my students as a dean now. <laughs> it's a beautiful occasion. And the registrar of Anna University. Uh, I am indeed, and my dear friends, alumni, my former colleagues, I deem it a great honor and privilege to be here in this beautiful auditorium to talk about the wonderful time the very useful, momentous time we had with our dear Padma Shri Professor Dr. Anatha Krishnan. Nostalgic memories come to me when I stand before you in the same podium, in the same stage. How many times both of us have conducted uh, momentous programs that what comes to me is a glorious 200 years of this college, CAG. How many of you remember the beautiful way he guided us to conduct the bicentenary celebrations of College of Engineering Gindi? Can you forget what all happened? You had the president, the chief minister, the governor, named the dignitaries, and we had uh, such a beautiful time when we were starting from 93 to 96 till even. I was fortunate to be associated with Dr. Anantha Krishnan from day one till he demitted his office, six years. I consider that as a golden period in my career because he was a kind, considerate, but a strict boss. We learned a lot from him and many things have been said by Dr. Sadiq and the Vice Chancellor, what all he did. And let me share some of my uh, thoughts about his glorious contribution to this university. But before that, I must say, even before <coughs> he became the Vice Chancellor of Anna University, I had uh, two occasions to meet him in US. In 1977, I had the fortune to go and present a paper in an international conference in Detroit, even uh, before Gilded Engineering College became uh, a university, 
And I, after that, I was visiting some of the universities and I had occasion during that round trip to go to Washington and stay with a good friend, mutual friend of Antakrishnan, Mr. Ranganathan and Mrs. Ranganathan, World Bank. And when they knew that I am there and uh, Jayaka and uh, Antakrishnan was kind enough to invite me for a breakfast meeting, and I still remember, I hope she remembers, you heard me with, <laughs> I was starving with idlis and whatnot. And that was a very beautiful time I spent with him. And they are a kind of fatherly figure for Tamil people in Washington at the time. They used to always uh, get, to, to get together. He was so good, so nice, and everybody used to go along with him. The next time I met him is 1984, again, when I went to a conference in Canada on my way back. I went to his office in United Nations and had a very good talk about what's happening in education, both in India, and he was sharing some of his ideas. So those two good occasions I must mention because our relationship started much before he came to Anna University. But then, when he joined and then he had, at that time, many of you may know or may not know, even though Anna, Anna University was in existence, it was starving for cash. <laughs> Ramayan will know, as a registrar, even to make the uh, payment every month, you know, we used to struggle. But then, he identified areas which need to be really promoted in Anna University because we have a competitor just across the state. And this was started by Dr. Valdasamy, but then continued very well by Dr. Anantha Krishnan. So we have to dwell in areas which is not being seen by IIT. So they chose two areas uh, and cultivated them to become centers of excellence. The first one is the Institute for Remote Sensing. And you know, this has become a landmark in the growth of Anna University. And Dr. Ananda Krishnan played a crucial role in promoting that. And the second one already mentioned by uh, the Vice Chancellor is the AUFRG CAT CAM Center. Believe me, he got grants for both these units from Germany, which is aiding IIT, which is the... So you see the difference. He could tap the country which is aiding IIT to come to Anna University and establish as a significant. And it's a very difficult job. And he did it excellent. We were with him and then the seriousness with which he engaged the German people and told them how we are competent and well trained to take care of this. And believe me, these two will be a standing example for the great contribution made by Ananda Krishnan in the form of Swai. Of course, the other areas are also had his touch, but then these are really significant centers which brought on one side the industry to AUFRG center and the other, the government used extensively the facilities in uh, the Institute of Remote Sensing. On the academic side, he started a very novel undergraduate program that is geoinformatics. We were all worried uh, whether this will take off because uh, at that time, the, but then he boldly took a step and uh, he was backed by the faculty who were working there, Professor Nadrajan and Guru Swami. You see, it, it just sprang up and as the director, I was really worried whether it will go on. But then, believe me, it became a success. That was the first program in the whole of country to, you know, emanate with his ideas, and then it was a success. The other is a um, postgraduate program, I think Professor Murugesan is here, on polymer science. 
that's a very difficult kind of a proposition, what a polymer science to do with an engineering college. But then we did it, and that was again a success story. Now, these are some of the examples in which she laid emphasis, prodded us, and then said, come on, move on. And uh, it was an exhilarating experience for all of us to work with him. And uh, as I said, she was kind, considerate, always pushing us and then uh, guiding us in the proper way. But among all the, the rest of the contribution, the most significant contribution which he made was in the area of quality for education. My God, we started the work and many of you may or may not know, we are the pioneers in the country. We were the first to start talking about quality in education. What is, who is talking about? Every day now is talking about quality of education. The chief minister said the quality of education should be started. But what's happening? You know what's happening. Quality of education is such a difficult task. And uh, she understood the meaning and significance. At one particular point, we had at the College of Engineering in Gindi, all the 250 faculty members engaged. Would you believe that? Yeah, faculty members, professors, assistant professors, lecturers, all joined together and trying to do uh, embark on quality imperatives in education. Of course, you took a lot of time to make them, persuade them to act and then do it. Thanks to uh, my association with the industry, because we wanted to say, if our industry can raise to international standard and get Deming Award from Japan, why not? Why not we try the same kind of, uh, kind of techniques to improve the education? So what has happened was remarkable and uh, Dr. Ananda Krishnan fully backed me and I can never forget his help. And uh, we first started with the Quality Circle Movement and then slowly introduced the faculty members. What they did was simple. In a classroom, in a particular semester, six faculty members, professors, go and take the class. And each one of the faculty members have a one particular vision about the staff member, the students, who are the products. So what happened? So I, when I took over as the director, the results of the first semester came, and I was stuck. Come on, 30% failure in maths, 40% failure in physics. How could it happen? This is the best college in the state. The best students join. How could such amount of failure take place? There must be something wrong. Let's find out. So what I asked is, gentlemen, lady who are taking the class, please sit and discuss about the class at the end of each semester, each, at the end of each month of a semester. And they started looking at it. And then, so because you see, it's very difficult to, you know, point fingers, but then we never wanted to blame anybody, but then we wanted them to come along. So many tangible, intangible benefits and difficulties experienced by the students is, can be solved in a very systematic way using the quality circle tools. And uh, this is a wonderful experience and you participated. So we made some improvement. The next, the results were good. They were all happy about it. So we moved from that to the next level. And those who participated in the movement are all here before me. And I'm so happy that they have been a great kind of uh, strength for building up this quality system in College of Engineering, Gindi Anna University. So it just moved up and he keep, kept on encouraging me. We went to the next level of total quality management in education. So that was the next step. So at that time, higher level was there at the university. At one, one time, you know, it just became imp imp very imperative that the senior faculty members like deans, heads of departments, they should all be involved in this process. So I went to him and uh, said, I want to organize a training program. And you gave me free hand. Yes, go ahead. 
uh, sir, but I don't want to organize this within the college because they are in the college, somebody will phone up, sir, this problem, that problem, they will all be driven out. I want to have it outside. Go ahead. So it was organized in a four-star <laughs> hotel outside first time. And uh, yes, go ahead. Then I was still standing before him, sir. What? I gave you permission. Why are you still? I want you to attend the program. Hey, you have the audacity to ask a vice chancellor to attend the training program? Yes, sir. That's what Venu Sinavasan does in his factory when a quality meeting is done. Then only the seriousness of the problem goes down the line. Believe, believe, the vice chancellor agreed. He attended the program. The guru who conducted the quality is here sitting in front of me, Mr. Sanjeev Rao, sir, pronounce. He conducted the program for the vice chancellor. How many vice chancellors do you think will come and attend the program if it is conducted? So that was the kind of vice chancellor we had to drive us to progress. So it was a clean sweep. So he appointed a coordinator for university on TQM. He introduced a topic on a subject called TQM, which was a sort of offer to all the branches of engineering. And uh, you see, a book was written, the author is on the stage here, on TQM, which is a textbook. All this happened. How did it happen? Unless you have an understanding boss who says, come on, something is happening good, go ahead. And as a first kind of a experience to do it in the whole country, for the, I don't know what is the status now, but only thing I can, uh, the vice chancellor has agreed, he will revive. If we really want to perpetuate the memory of our dear Ananda Krishnan, a center for quality in education must be started in Anna University. And name the center as Ananda Krishnan Quality Management Center. We will all come and then people are here, they will be able to come. So we have proposed to the government of India Everybody says, I'm sorry, the Honorable Chief Minister says, Kalvin Taram Vendum. Yes, but what are we doing? You can't use a magic wand and improve the quality. That's for sure. We have found out by practice is the hard work, is empowerment, empowering the teachers. How are you doing it? Just by putting an executive order from the top. It's a top down approach. No, sir. It has to be bottom up. Use the teachers, you recognize them and then train them. That's very important. You train the teachers so that they will be able to really form. And I want to tell you the Quality Circle Forum of India, people are here. They are conducting relentlessly every year a Quality Circle in education. But how much they can, how many people? They have just hardly uh, dealt with about 100 schools uh, including colleges. Wherever they are really seriously pursued, you see, they all are risen up like anything. I remember myself and I don't know, Dr. Anand Samuel is here. We went to Vellur Institute of Technology before it became a unit. We gave a two-day training program and believe me, they really followed it and they even took Anand Samuel back and then he became the vice chancellor. They are number one today. And we should have been number one by this time if we had faithfully followed what all we did under Dr. Anand Krishnan. I am very, very clear about it. Somehow something happened. They call it collateral damage. What is the collateral damage? From Unitary University, we became an affiliating university. There ended. And Anand Krishnan. <laughs> we all joined together, we are post, but we couldn't do anything. But anyhow, uh, that's all. Even with this change, it will still be possible. Another important point is how many of you may or may not know that he had great influence on South American countries. Many of you may not know. You see, 
many country heads like uh, education ministers energy ministers are so close friends of anand krishnan i don't know what happened they he got a direct letter from the prime minister of canada uh, the, uh, brazil to depute a person from india to represent india on the new and renewable source of energy yeah, an international workshop was being conducted it in brazil and of course uh, he was so kind enough to depute me for that program i went there and i uh, with, the, with the minister presiding over the proceedings the minister came and asked how is dr ananda krishnan right i was surprised my god what an influence he had with the people all over and uh, it was a very good experience because we had worked on ethanol here and so it was a very nice experience the entire uh, my trip was uh, taken care of by the government of brazil so what i am trying to say is he is not only with the our country our anna university but then he had influence over several sections of people so he you should know the smiling characteristics of dr ananta krishnan is spread all over the world and i was so impressed uh, by whatever he did so what i am trying to say is in the in the, in the, in the matter of quality what we should have in anna university is a center we should just say to the government that please institute a tamil nadu state council for quality in higher education tamil nadu state council for quality in school education because both are different the greatest difficulty faced by colleges universities is the kind of input you got say uh, you all they, they always blame me sir we don't have any control over admission what the kind of students who come so if the school education is proper and if you are they, they are able to feed good students in the colleges you will find you will be able to good, get good graduates who will readily employable now you see you struggle and you you really find people who pass through the colleges except good colleges they struggle to get jobs now it's therefore it is imperative and that training could start from anna university because we have experience we have experience in kind of thing. now the lastly i would like to say that a survey was conducted when we were doing uh, the quality work and the the leader of survey is again sharing the platform with us you can guess who and uh, they found in the survey the quality of any institution is dictated by mainly by teachers 60% is controlled 15% are the quality issues the students the remaining is only by the other factors like the government the society the parents they are able to very clearly bring out so as i said if we can really uh, handle the thousands and thousands of teachers in schools and bring them together train them properly with the quality what does the quality circle do you try to identify the problem in a systematic way and solve the problem i tell you if you ask dr babu who is sitting here they used to find out small corporation school children without wearing slippers they will come on the stage and present a case study in which they have solved a problem in the school basically come i say do we have students of this nature what are we doing i believe that our students are the best wherever you go we are not handling them properly so you only think systematic things we learned several point of team teaching ultra message there are several things which can be handled by the faculty members systematically and one of the main thing we said what is the quality quality is defined by mahatma gandhi as customer is a king who is a customer in education system students will the staff accept 
that you have to satisfy the students, you have to delight the students so that he learns. So to make people realize this important fact and bring them around, yes, we are here to teach and make them good citizens later on. And that is the way you work through the quality. A lot of things. And you have, I said, I did not say you, the survey was conducted by Dr. Suganti. I'm such a great thing. Another thing, whatever quality tools that are used by Deming industry, FEMA, Q of D, everything can be used in improving the quality in education. All of them have been tested and they're there. So, thank you very much. Again, I want to stress that if we have to really, uh, you know, honor our dear Dr. Ananda Krishnan, please, what was so good to him in his heart is the quality in education, especially uh, in school education. As he rightly pointed out, the Anna Jem school was uh, his, his brainchild. So, as a follow-up measure, uh, what we have done, I just want to tell you, this is a message for the, the president of our uh, alumni association. The 1956-60 batch students, uh, of which the leader is Mr. Paul Pandian, is so close friend of Anantha Krishnan. We picked up a school in uh, a place which is so close to his place, Vanya Badi, in, uh, in Yelagiri, which is, yeah, uh, which is yeah, <laughs> downtrodden, the poorest of poor students, tribal students study there. We tried to change. So when we went there, we saw the students are sitting on the floor, not on the inside the classroom, but outside on the field, trying to have the class. I said, after 70 years of independence, you can't even provide suitable chairs and benches for our students. That's really, we have really moved and then we said we will try. So we slowly and steadily in the last three, four years, we moved up the school to some level. And uh, my good friend, uh, and he's so close to Anita Krishnan, Nedinjalian is here, he visited. <laughs> the school and and he was amazed probably to see what all uh, yeah he's there so you find now why not each batch of the students when they come here for 25 years 30 years to celebrate they spend about one crore of rupees in all kind of samashas and they do something for the college a lot is small percentage small percentage of the amount you collect give it to your school bring it up especially these tribal schools, you know, it will again be a tribute to our education because he, he really, because he chose that place because it is very near Vanyambadi and uh, Anantha Krishnan uh, is so close and then he worked, uh, Paul, <coughs> Paul Pandian, both of them brought up Tamil Nadu Foundation. I'm uh, very happy to see Mr. Swaminathan who was the chairman of TNF and uh, TNF was used for uh, equipping the school. So, what I'm trying to say is there are many good things, memories we carry with Dr. Ananda Krishnan, which cannot be taken away from us because he was a perfect gentleman all the time, encouraging us, goading us to do more. And may his soul rest in peace. Sir, we will always think about you. We will, we will carry out what all you wanted to do and we will definitely try to promote quality of education, which is so dear to you, Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Working with the great visionary itself can be a memorable journey, and your close association with Professor Ananda Krishnan, sir, is filled with moments of success and glory. Next, we will witness now a soulful rendition of poetry penned by Mrs. Uma Devi Ravi, the daughter-in-law of Professor Ananda Krishnan, which will be read out to the audience by the alumni executive member, Mr. Nyanasekaran. 
Subsequently, Mr. Nyanasegaran will also read a few lines from his own poetry on the great personality whom we fondly remember today. You're welcome, sir. நமதுவேந்தர் எங்களையெல்லாம் செதுக்கிய சிற்பிகள் மதிப்புரு பேராசிரியர்கள் பேராசிரியர் முனைவர் சே சாதிக் அவர்களே பேராசிரியர் முனைவர் டி ஆர் ஜெகதீசன் அவர்களே மிகுந்த தயக்கத்துடன் எங்கள் அன்பு அழைப்புக்கு ஏற்று இங்கு வந்திருக்கின்ற அம்மா ஜெயலட்சுமி ஆனந்த கிருஷ்ணன் அவர்களே திரு அவருடைய மகன் திரு சத்யமூர்த்தி ஆனந்த கிருஷ்ணன் அவர்களே அண்ணா பல்கலைக்கழகத்தின் மதிப்புரு பதிவாளர் பேராசிரியர் முனைவர் ரவிக்குமார் அவர்களே கிண்டி பொறியியர் கல்லூரியின் சீர்மிகு முன்னாள் மாணவர் சங்க தலைவர் பொறியாளர் எம் இ ரூப்சந்தர் அவர்களே நமது கல்லூரியின் கல்வி தலைவர் டீன் தமிழ் அப்படிதான் சொல்ற கல்வி தலைவர் பேராசிரியர் முனைவர் சுகந்தி அவர்களே முன்னாள் மற்றும் இந்நாள் பேராசிரியர் பெருமக்களே முன்னாள் மாணவர் சங்க நிர்வாகிகளே உறுப்பினர்களே பேராசிரியர்களுடன் நெருங்கி பழகி அவரின் பால் கொண்ட பேரன்பினால் இந்த நினைவேந்தல் நிகழ்ச்சியில் கடந்து கொண்டுள்ள அவர் தம் உறவினர்களே நண்பர்களே இணைந்து பணியாற்றியவர்களே உங்கள் அனைவருக்கும் எமது அன்பு வணக்கங்கள் இந்த கவிதைகளை நான் படிக்க முன்பாக சிலருக்கு நான் நன்றி சொல்ல வேண்டும் இப்படி ஒரு நினைவேந்தல் நிகழ்ச்சியை நாம் ஏற்பாடு செய்ய வேண்டும் என்று துணைவேந்தர் அவர்களை அணுகிய போது உடனடியாக அதை முன்வந்து இப்படி ஒரு அழகான ஒரு நிகழ்ச்சியை ஏற்படுத்தி கொடுத்தது கொடுத்ததுக்காக துணைவேந்தர் அவர்களுக்கு நாம் நன்றி பாராக கடைப்பட்டிருக்கிறோம் அதோடு அவரோடு இணைந்து பணியாற்றிய பேராசிரியர் குமரேசன் டீன் பேராசிரியர் சுகந்தி அவர்களுக்கும் எனது அன்பு கலந்த நன்றிகள் நண்பர் ரூப்சந்தர் ஏஐசிஜியின் பிரசிடென்ட் என்னோடு கூட வந்து எல்லாரையும் பார்க்கறதுக்கு எல்லாம் ஏற்பாடு பண்ணார் இதை கூட வந்து சில பேர் ஹெல்ப் பண்ணியிருக்காங்க திரு வெங்கடாச்சலம் சொல்லிட்டு அவர் ஐயாவுடைய உறவினர் எல்லாருடைய இணைப்பு நமக்கு ஏற்படுத்தி கொடுத்துருக்கிறாரு அவருக்கு ஒரு நன்றி பொறியாளர் நெடுஞ்செழியன் இந்த கனித்தமிழ் சங்கம் மூலமாக எல்லாரையும் இணைப்பு கொடுத்தார் அவருக்கு ஒரு பெரிய நன்றி இதெல்லாம் நம்ம கண்டிப்பாக இங்கே சொல்லி ஆகணும் ஏனென்றால் இப்படி ஒரு விழா இது விழான்னு தான் சொல்லணும் அவருடைய நினைவேந்தல் என்றாலும் ஒரு பெரியவர்கள் சாதனை புரிந்தவர்களை கொண்டாடுவது ஒரு விழா தானே அப்படி தான் நான் சொல்லணும் இதுக்கு வந்து இந்த குறுகிய நேரத்தில் ஒரு இரண்டு வார நேர காலத்தில் இப்படி ஒரு சந்திப்பை ஏற்படுத்தி கொடுத்ததுக்கு அனைவருக்கும் நன்றி இப்பொழுது அமரர் பேராசிரியர் ஆனந்த கிருஷ்ணன் அவர்களின் மருமகள் திருமதி உமாதேவி அவர்களின் கவிதை இவர் அமெரிக்காவில் இருக்கிறார் நமது கல்லூரியின் முன்னாள் மாணவர் ஆயிரத்தி தொள்ளாயிரத்தி எண்பத்தி நாலாம் ஆண்டு நமது இங்கே பட்டம் பெற்றவர் இப்பொழுது அமெரிக்காவில் இருக்கிறார் அங்கிருந்து கவிதையை அனுப்பியிருக்கிறார் இப்பொழுது அதை பார்த்து கொண்டிருப்பார் நேரலையில் என்று நினைக்கிறேன் தந்தை என்ற தலைப்பிலே ஒரு கவிதையை அனுப்பியிருக்கிறார்கள் ஒரு தந்தை போல் என் வாழ்வில் வந்தீர்கள் ஒரு தந்தையை போல் என் வாழ்வில் வாழ்ந்தீர்கள் ஒரு தந்தையை போல் என் வாழ்வில் வந்தீர்கள் ஒரு தந்தையை போல் என் வாழ்வில் வாழ்ந்தீர்கள் உங்கள் குரலே எனக்கு நம்பிக்கை கொடுத்தது முப்பத்தெட்டு ஆண்டுகளுக்கு முன் கடல் கடந்து அமெரிக்கா வருவதற்கு தொலைபேசியில் உங்கள் குரலே எனக்கு நம்பிக்கை கொடுத்தது உங்கள் உற்சாகம் எங்களுக்கு எடுத்துக்காட்டு உங்கள் உற்சாகம் குழந்தையின் உற்சாகம் போன்றது உங்கள் உற்சாகம் எங்களுக்கு எடுத்துக்காட்டு உங்கள் உற்சாகம் குழந்தையின் உற்சாகம் போன்றது அருண் அர்ச்சனாவுடன் மெக்டோனல்ட்ஸ் அல்லது பிசாஹட் சாப்பிட செல்லும் போதும் 
வயிறு குலுங்க நீங்கள் சிரிக்கும் போதும் பொது விஷயங்களை கற்றுக்கொள்ள உட்காரும் போதும் தொண்ணூறு வயதிலும் கணினியில் உட்காரும் போதும் ஹார்வர்ட் பல்கலைக்கழக வகுப்புகளில் ஒரு சிறுவனை போல் உட்கார்ந்து படிக்கும் போதும் உங்கள் உற்சாகம் எங்களுக்கு எடுத்துக்காட்டு உங்கள் உற்சாகம் சிறுவர்களுக்கும் எடுத்துக்காட்டு கல்வித்துறையில் வானளவிற்கு உயர்ந்தீர்கள் கல்வித்துறையில் வானளவிற்கு உயர்ந்தீர்கள் நீங்கள் தொட்ட சிகரம் சிறுவர்களுக்கு மட்டுமல்ல அனைவருக்கும் ஓர் எடுத்துக்காட்டு உங்களை நாங்கள் எதிர்பாராத நேரத்தில் இழந்தோம் உங்களை நாங்கள் முற்றிலும் எதிர்பாராத நேரத்தில் இழந்தோம் ஆனால் உங்கள் நினைவுகள் எங்களுடன் இருக்கும் உங்கள் நினைவுகள் என்றென்றும் எங்களுடன் இருக்கும் என்று கவிதை எழுதியிருக்கிறார்கள் அடுத்ததாக பேராசிரியர் அவர்களின் சகோதரியரின் பேத்தி திருமதி தீபா சுந்தரேசன் ஒரு சிறிய கவிதை அவரும் அமெரிக்கா வந்து அமைச்சிருக்கிறாரு திரு சத்தியமூர்த்தி ரெண்டு நாளைக்கு முன்னதான் எனக்கு அனுப்பிச்சிருந்தார் அன்பும் ஆற்றலும் தீரமும் கூடிய கண்மம் அன்பும் ஆற்றலும் தீரமும் கூடிய கண்மம் கண்மம்னா ஆக்ஷன் அன்பும் ஆற்றலும் தீரமும் கூடிய கண்மம் பெருங்கருணை பெனவலன்ஸ் பெருங்கருணை ஊராண்மை ஜெனராசிட்டி மன்ற மன்ற என்று மிக மிக அர்த்தம் பெருங்கருணை ஊராண்மை மன்ற ஒன்றாத ஊக்கம் கடத்தி ஒன்றாத ஊக்கம் கடத்தி மனதினில் என்றும் அழியா சுடர் அப்படின்னு அவர் எழுதி அமைச்சிருக்கிறாரு இப்போ நான் அவருக்கு எழுதியிருக்கிற கவிதை அவருடைய செயல்பாடுகளை முக்கியமானதை மட்டும் எடுத்து இந்த கவிதைகளை கொடுத்துருக்கிறேன் அதை பத்தி எழுதுறதுனா பக்கம் பக்கமா எழுதலாம் அந்த அளவுக்கு அவர் நிறைய செய்திகள் இருக்கு ஒரு சிலவத்தை மட்டும் இங்க நான் குறிப்பிடுகிறேன் வாணியம் வாடியதனில் வேளாண் குடி பிறந்து வளமான தமது கல்வி வளத்தால் வாணியம் வாடியதனில் வேளாண் குடி பிறந்து வளமான தமது கல்வி வளத்தால் வான் புகழை தனதாக்கிய வரலாற்று நாயகர் இவருக்கு எம் வற்றாத தமிழால் புகழ் வணக்கம் வான் புகழை தனதாக்கிய வரலாற்று நாயகர் இவருக்கு எம் வற்றாத தமிழால் புகழ் வணக்கம் அனைவருமே போற்றுகின்ற ஆனந்த முகத்துடனே செயல்படவோ அனைவருமே போற்றுகின்ற ஆனந்த முகத்துடனே செயல்படவோ ஆனந்த கிருஷ்ணன் என பெயரிட்டார் இவர் தம் அருந்தவ அம்மையப்பர் அனைவருமே போற்றுகின்ற ஆனந்த முகத்துடனே செயல்படவோ ஆனந்த கிருஷ்ணன் என பெயரிட்டார் இவர் தம் அருந்தவ அம்மையப்பர் தான் பெற்ற படிப்பறிவும் பட்டறிவும் தரணிதான் உயர்ந்திடவே உவந்தளித்த தான் பெற்ற படிப்பறிவும் பட்டறிவும் தரணிதான் உயர்ந்திடவே உவந்தளித்த தகைசால் பண்பாளர் இவர் தமிழர்களின் பெரும் சொத்து தகைசால் பண்பாளர் இவர் தமிழர்களின் பெரும் சொத்து தமிழறிஞர்கள் திருவிகா மறைமலையார் தகைசால் பெரியாரின் பழக்கத்தால் தமிழறிஞர்கள் திருவிகா மறைமலையார் தகைசால் பெரியாரின் பழக்கத்தால் தமிழ் பற்றும் சமூக நீதியும் தன்னெறியாக்கிய தரமான தமிழறிவர் தமிழறிஞர்கள் திருவிகா மறைமலையார் தகைசால் பெரியாரின் பழக்கத்தால் தமிழ் பற்றும் சமூக நீதியும் தன்னெறியாக்கிய தரமான தமிழறிவர் கிராமப்புற மாணவர்களும் வாய்ப்பு பெற கல்லூரி படிப்பதனின் சேர்க்கைதனில் கிராமப்புற மாணவர்களும் வாய்ப்பு பெற கல்லூரி படிப்பதனின் சேர்க்கை தனில் சதவிகிதம் பதினைந்தை ஒதுக்கீடு செய்த சமதர்ம சிற்பி இவர் மீண்டும் படிக்கிறேன் கிராமப்புற மாணவர்களும் வாய்ப்பு பெற கல்லூரி படிப்பதனின் சேர்க்கை தனில் சதவிகிதம் பதினைந்தை ஒதுக்கீடு செய்த சமதர்ம சிற்பி இவர் சமதர்ம சமுதாய சிற்பி இவர் பொறியியர் கல்லூரி புகுவதற்கே பொது தேர்வு எழுதுகின்ற பெருஞ்சுமையை பொறியியர் கல்லூரி புகுவதற்கே பொது தேர்வு எழுதுகின்ற பெருஞ்சுமையை முற்றாக இறக்கி வைத்து புகழ்பெற்ற முற்போக்கு சிந்தனை முனைவர் இவர் கல்லூரி ஒவ்வொன்றுக்கும் மாணவர்கள் கால்கெடுக்க ஓடுவதை தவிர்க்கும் வகை ஒற்றை சாளர சேர்ப்பு முறையை உருவாக்கிய உன்னத மனிதர் இவர் ஒற்றை சாளர சேர்ப்பு முறையை உருவாக்கிய உன்னத மனிதர் இவர் அனைவருக்கும் கல்வி என்ற அறமதனை நிறுவிடவே அனைவருக்கும் கல்வி என்ற அறமதனை நிறுவிடவே 
முதல் வருடம் ஆலோசகராய் முனைந்து இவரளித்த அளப்பரிய பங்களிப்பை ஆன்றோர் அறிவர் தமிழ் சிறக்க கனித்தமிழ் சங்கமும் தமிழ் இணைய கல்விக் கழகமும் உருவாக்கியதால் தமிழ் சிறக்க கனித்தமிழ் சங்கமும் தமிழ் இணைய கல்விக் கழகமும் உருவாக்கியதால் தமிழ் உள்ளவரை இவர் புகழ்தாம் தரணி எங்கும் நிறைந்து நிற்கும் தமிழ் சிறக்க கனித்தமிழ் சங்கமும் தமிழ் இணைய கல்விக் கழகமும் உருவாக்கியதால் தமிழ் உள்ளவரை இவர் புகழ்தாம் தரணி எங்கும் நிறைந்து நிற்கும் தகவல் தொழில்நுட்ப பணிக்குழுவை தக்காரை கொண்டு தகைவாய் உருவாக்கி தகவல் தொழில்நுட்ப பணிக்குழுவை தக்காரை கொண்டு தகைவாய் உருவாக்கி தமிழ் மென்பொருளை அறிமுகம் செய்திட்ட தகைசால் சான்றோர் இவர்தானே தமிழ் மென்பொருளை அறிமுகம் செய்திட்ட தகைசால் சான்றோர் இவர்தானே தமிழ்நாட்டு மாணவர் தாம் தரணிதனில் உயர்ந்திடவே தமிழ்நாட்டு மாணவர் தாம் தரணிதனில் உயர்ந்திடவே உயர்கல்வி துறையதனின் ஆற்றல் மிக்க தலைவராய் பணியாற்றி உரம் சேர்த்த மனிதரிவர் வளரும் நாடெல்லாம் அறிவியலில் வளம் பெற வேண்டும் என்ற விருப்பத்தால் பேராசிரியர் சொன்னார் சவுத் ஆப்பிரிக்கா பற்றி சொன்னார் வளரும் நாடெல்லாம் அறிவியலி அறிவியலில் வளம் பெற வேண்டும் என்ற விருப்பத்தால் சிறப்பாக இவர் படைத்த கட்டுரைகள் புத்தகங்கள் இக்கல்வியாளர் விட்டு சென்ற வரலாற்றின் சாட்சியங்கள் வளரும் நாடெல்லாம் அறிவியலில் வளம் பெற வேண்டும் என்ற விருப்பத்தால் சிறப்பாக இவர் படைத்த கட்டுரைகள் புத்தகங்கள் இக்கல்வியாளர் விட்டு சென்ற வரலாற்றின் சாட்சியங்கள் மனிதம் போற்றும் மாண்பினாலே மனித வளங்களை சிறப்பாக வழி நடத்தி இது ரொம்ப எல்லாருமே அவர் மட்டும் சொல்றது தான் ஹவு இஸ் மேனேஜ் வித் பீப்புள் மனிதம் போற்றும் மாண்பினாலே மனித வளங்களை சிறப்பாக வழி நடத்தி தாம் பணிபுரிந்த இடங்கள் எல்லாம் பல்கலைக்கழகமாக்கிய பல்கலை வித்தகரிவர் மனிதம் போற்றும் மாண்பினாலே மனித வளங்களை சிறப்பாக வழி நடத்தி தாம் பணிபுரிந்த இடங்கள் எல்லாம் பல்கலைக்கழகமாக்கிய பல்கலை வித்தகர் இவர் அவர் தம் முதல் ஆண்டு நினைவு நாளில் அவருக்கு நாமளிக்கும் உயர் வணக்கம் அவர் போல ஆனந்த கிருஷ்ணன்கள் ஆயிரம் ஆயிரமாய் உருவாகி அவர் முதலாம் ஆண்டு நினைவு நாளில் அவருக்கு நாமளிக்கும் உயர் வணக்கம் அவர் போல ஆனந்த கிருஷ்ணன்கள் ஆயிரம் ஆயிரமாய் உருவாகி அன்னை தமிழுக்கும் நாட்டிற்கும் அவர் போல அறம் சார்ந்து அர்ப்பணித்து செயல் புரிவோம் அன்னை தமிழுக்கும் நாட்டுக்கும் அவர் போல அறம் சார்ந்து அர்ப்பணித்து செயல் புரிவோம் கீர்த்தி மிகு கிண்டி பொறியியர் கல்லூரியின் ஆளுமை மிகு மாணவர் இப்பெரியார் என்பதனிலே அளப்பெரிய பெருமை மிக கொள்கின்றோம் கீர்த்தி மிகு கிண்டி பொறியியர் கல்லூரியின் ஆளுமை மிகு மாணவர் இப்பெரியார் என்பதாலே அளப்பெரிய பெருமை மிக கொள்கின்றோம் அன்றும் இன்றும் என்றும் மாணவர் நாம் வாழ்க அமரர் பேராசிரியர் மு ஆனந்த கிருஷ்ணன் அவர்களின் புகழ் நன்றி வணக்கம்
வணக்கம் டியர் வைஸ் சான்சலர் டியர் ஃபார்மர் வைஸ் சான்சலர் டிரெக்டர் பிரசிடென்ட் ரெஜிஸ்ட்ரார் டீன் ப்ரொஃபஸர்ஸ் அலம்னஸ் ஃப்ரெண்ட்ஸ் ஃபேமிலி அண்ட் மோஸ்ட் இம்பார்ட்டன்ட்லி த யங் ஸ்டூடெண்ட்ஸ் இன்க்ளூடிங் எவ்ரி ஒன் வாட்சிங் ஆன்லைன் we are here today to remember our padma shri our chairman our vc our prof our doc our dr ananda krishnan our daddy our tata he came from humble beginnings in vanyambadi and rose to the highest levels working with presidents ministers industry tycoons all over the world but he would be the first to acknowledge that there were many along this journey who deserve credit for his success on finishing high school his parents wanted him to get a job to support the family but recognizing his uh, talents and gifts his grandmother was adamant that he goes on to college and his teachers at hindu secondary school and islamia high school supported this in fact they secured scholarships for him to attend first islamia college and then gindi later on after his be while working at the highways department just down the road here his friends showed him an announcement from the indian government scholarship for masters in the us this time it was his life partner and constant pillar of strength our mother jayalakshmi who convinced his parents that it was best for him to leave his safe government job and go overseas for a year leaving his wife and young child behind his friends at the highways department they literally filled out the scholarship forms and mailed it for him to delhi they even loaned him i believe it was like 7 rupees for the train fare to go for the interview in delhi he was awarded the scholarship and he actually went to uh, the university of minnesota and he finished his masters in 1957 his advisor there asked him to stay on for a phd and he in fact advanced him the money for air fare for my mother and my brother to join him in the us and helped him get a part time job so that he could support the young family in addition to all these people who helped him along he also credits his mentors and friends throughout his career who pushed him to greater heights internationally but more importantly to him here at home in india they all saw an extraordinary a person of extraordinary capability drive and vision and did everything in their power to help him rise to his full potential but most of all he credited his grandmother and his life partner for teaching him to consider the possibilities beyond the horizon rather than just settle for what you see in front of you after finishing his graduate studies in the us in 1961 and again after retiring from the un in 1989 he could have settled overseas but he never forgot that he owed a huge debt to all the helping hands who lifted him up i'm sure you'll agree with me 
that he has paid back this debt with interest many times over by making his life about helping uplift India, uplift Tamil Nadu, and the disadvantaged and the needy. So how did he achieve this? Based on our conversations with him and going through some of his notes and journals, this requires three things. First is identifying your passion. Second is defining your vision and mission. And finally, executing this vision and mission with integrity. So first, his passion was teaching and education. Daddy always idealized his teachers. Early on, Mr. Ramanath Iyer, his neighbor and math teacher at uh, Hindu secondary school, piqued his interest in math by creating special math problems for him to solve as they walked together to school every day. At Islamia High School, Mr. Kurdus, his 10th uh, class math teacher, recognized his abilities and had him uh, grade his classmates' exam papers. That was his first taste of teaching. By the way, uh, while he was good at math and science, he secured the top rank in the state for Tamil and was awarded a Tirukural for his achievement. While working on his PhD at the University of Minnesota, he became a teaching assistant to his advisor. That is when he disappeared that is when he discovered his passion for teaching and education. Ignoring lucrative job offers in the US, he returned to India in 1961. After all, he reasoned, the Indian taxpayer had given their hard earned money for his scholarship and it was his duty to pay it back. In 1963, he joined IIT Kanpur, where he indulged his passion for teaching and education for 12 wonderful years. At IIT Kanpur, he authored his first book, which was on engineering graphics. Later, as we all know, he had a distinguished a few years as VC at Anna University, and then uh, almost 10 years as chairman, board of governors at IIT Kanpur. Not to mention the numerous state and national level committees that he uh, chaired and worked on. But he was never contended. He continued to, the, to his last days working on a book on higher education in India. This book will be released on his birthday on July 12th by Mr. Nedinjarian, his co-author. So after his passion, the next is how did he develop his vision and mission? After the diplomatic fallout from India's first nuclear explosion in Pokhran, he was selected by the Department of Science and Technology as the first science counselor to the Indian Embassy in Washington, D.C. from 1974 to 1978. His duties included not only being the scientific interface uh, on nuclear matters, but also to work with U.S agencies like NASA and National Science Foundations and the Indian diaspora on identifying, transferring, and developing 
science and technology related infrastructure for India. After that, from 1979 to 1998, he was with the UN Center for Science and Technology with similar responsibilities, but it was on a global scale. These positions gave him a very good understanding of the complexities of the development process, especially relating to education, science, and technology. The experience he gained on UN development missions, launching projects, and interacting with senior officials from different regions of the world, sharpened his vision and fleshed out his mission for what he wanted to achieve here at home in India. But it was not just what he learned at work that molded his vision. I'm sure many of you know of his love for technology and gadgets, but this was not just for the sake of acquiring the latest toy. His real mission was in figuring out how to use these new technologies and gadgets and software to improve not only his first love, which was education, from primary school through college to continuous learning to adult education, but also to improve governance and dissemination of knowledge to all. How could we use these technologies to bring efficiency and integrity to bureaucracy whether at an educational institution or at the local, state, or national level. Less than four weeks before he passed away, his granddaughter asked him, based on all his experiences, what advice would he give her? He told her, keep at least one field of interest other than what you are studying. So keep at least one field of interest other than what you are studying. This was not just idle advice. Leafing through his diaries and notes until two weeks before his passing away, he was attending online courses and daily TED, TED Talks on a range of topics, some technical, others not technical, philosophy, economics, and so on. Obviously, at that late stage, it was not to get a degree or diploma, but to learn what is new, how things are done elsewhere, how these ideas can be adopted and adapted to improve our field of interest, our community, improve our state, improve our nation. Finally, execution. Having a vision and mission is wonderful, but in a democracy, executing your vision requires working with elected politicians, and of course, the bureaucracy. But he was no stranger to politics and bureaucrats and understood the importance of working with them. Even as a primary school child, he would go with his father to neighborhood uh, political meetings. This was pre-independence and the local Congress, DK leaders, and other party leaders like E.V. Ramasamy Nayakar and E.V.K. Sampath would discuss and debate local and national politics. There was also a reading room with a variety of magazines and newspapers, which exposed him to a wide range of often conflicting and competing viewpoints and ideas. At these political meetings, caste, religion, economic divide were forgotten, 
and consensus was usually reached after some give and take because everyone believed and trusted that the others are working against a common enemy which was the colonial powers, the British. Early on, he learned to listen to different points of view and to use reason, logic, and data to persuade all parties to reach a consensus. At IIT Kanpur, he used these lessons to work with workers' unions, interdepartmental politics, interdepartmental politics by listening to contrasting and conflicting positions and points of views and try to forge compromise solutions acceptable to all. This requires that one come to the table with an open mind and to be prepared to go where reason, logic, and data takes you. But this also requires scrupulous integrity and to foster and to keep the trust of others. All parties involved have to believe that everything is above board and that there are no ulterior motives, no hidden agendas, and no one is being shown any favoritism. He strongly believed that once that trust is broken, it is impossible to regain. The second but, but more important piece of advice he gave to his granddaughter four, months, four weeks before he passed away was, set a very high goal for yourself, not in terms of money and wealth, but in terms of respect. Set a very high goal for yourself, not in terms of money or wealth, but in terms of respect. The only thing he believed in more strongly than providing accessible education for all was to always act with integrity. Since we are gathered here at Anna University, we chose this excerpt from his journal. In his own words, on retirement from the UN, I had the choice to stay in the US or return to India. I decided on the latter. The invitation from the search committee for vice chancellor of Anna University, Chennai, became the deciding factor. My service as vice chancellor for two terms, 1990 to 1996, was an em enormously satisfying experience. An enormously satisfying experience. I undertook several structural reforms for decentralizing the powers and functions, academic reforms towards total internal evaluation, special support to faculty reaching out for research funding, healthy relations with industries and alumni, and most important of all, keeping political interference at zero level. Today, to honor his life's mission, his daughter-in-law, Uma Devi, whose poetry you heard a few moments ago, uh, also alumnus of Gindi, batch of 83, would like to announce a five lakh rupees scholarship fund for disadvantaged and deserving students here at Gindi. Finally, in closing, our hope is 
that we always remember his passion, his vision, and his integrity, and use it as our guiding light as we strive to reach our own true potential. Nandri Wanakam. Thank you, sir, for your first-hand observations and narrating them so well to us. As you rightly pointed out, your father had identified his passion, defined his mission and vision, and executed his mission and vision with integrity. We have come to the close of the function. I now request our beloved registrar, sir, Professor G. Ravi Kumar, to propose the vote of thanks. Good evening, respected family members of uh, the professor. Professor TRJ, Professor Sadiq, respected Vice Chancellor, beloved AACG President, respected Dean, my respected senior uh, teachers, my colleagues, and student friends. Though it's our basic courtesy and responsibility to show our gratitude to all the contributions from Professor, I join with Engineer Jnana Sagaran in thanking the organizers for this great memory event. In fact, during his uh, tenure, the 1996, I happened to have uh, quite a few interactions with uh, the Professor. In fact, at the time, I was a PhD scholar, and I was also the hostel block and mess representative with my respected uh, Professor TRG as the director and the hostel warden for the CEG hostels. In fact, I remember uh, there was a lot of water problem in engineering college hostels, and uh, there was a few brick beds for our warden. <laughs> that things are not many problems. Then uh, our warden called me, Ravi Kumar, you go and... Uh, uh, request professor to come to our mess. In fact, the PG non mess was uh, very efficiently managed by me as a representative with the support of our uh, warden. Then I invited uh, uh, professor along with uh, ma'am to please come to the engineering college uh, mess for a dinner and uh, uh, you can appreciate the good works also being done in many other ways. So uh, that's a memorable occasion. And regarding the decentralization, in fact, uh, Professor Anand Kishan used to talk a lot. Uh, in fact, in one of the meetings, he used to, uh, I think he was speaking, uh, something like, uh, you don't waste my time uh, in the vice chancellor's office. You bring only the policy decision files to me. Maybe a sweeper, whether he sweeps in physics department or civilian department, it won't make any difference to the university. Don't bring those files to my table and waste my time. That's, uh, that, that's his uh, uh, clarity of thought. And he only made the uh, three-tier system of uh, department, college, and university to a two-tier system that the HODs can be reporting to the university directly. And that saved a lot of time. And uh, whatever is uh, the Anna Institute today, or whatever the plus points of Anna Institute today, the seats are shown by Professor Anand Krishnan during his 1996. Many of the administrators, including the present respected vice chancellor, myself, Dean, all we got selected by, during his tenure, and all those seats, they are only safeguarding the Anna University to a great level. And uh, uh, another thing what I understood today, uh, in addition to uh, many of the research centers started during his tenure, even for the centers started earlier than his tenure, like Center for Water Resources, Center for Environmental Studies, Institute of Remote Sensing, Center for Biotechnology, and Center for Crucial Growth, these Research centers have started earlier, but it seems it's only the Professor Ananda Krishnan who gave the financial autonomy to the research centers so that they can flourish. So that's the news which I read in one of the earlier convocation reports. So that's a great initiative from him that autonomous research centers will only aid in flourishing research in university. And it's as an example, it's not that simply we celebrate or uh, we have the memorable memory day uh, by, by, uh, to say I'm going to follow the steps. I'd like to inform you this August gathering. 
our present respected vice chancellor in addition to uh, ar arranging this one he had already fulfilled the dream of professor ananda krishnan in continuing his footsteps of creating these autonomous research centers in anand university by creating 11 new autonomous research centers a few months back in the form of center for iot center for cyber security center for artificial intelligence center for Art center for energy storage center for uh, e vehicle technologies etc etc and this 11 centers it's not the end of the list uh, maybe very soon there may be a few more centers to be in, to be uh, uh, inaugurated very soon in the coming months uh, including center for siddha research etc and uh, uh, you might be knowing professor anand krishnan's contribution in uh, creating this tamil virtual university and uh, mainly the international forum for it in tamil uh, but somehow uh, that effort is uh, not continued uh, sufficiently uh, uh, including uh, after we introduced the uh, tamil medium uh, uh, btech in anand university uh, soon there may be a autonomous financially autonomous research center uh, for center for uh, uh, it in tamil in anand university very soon so with this so so following his footsteps and executing whatever he had uh, visioned three days three decades back that's a great contribution to his uh, or follow up of his actions and in that way uh, we we show our gratitude in a better way so that's the thing the things are very positive for a few for the past few months and we hope to continue our efforts in continuing the legacy and the advices of professor ananda krishnan for the betterment of anand university in every possible way thanks for the opportunity to me thank you very much thank you sir kindly rise for the national anthem जन गण मन अधिनायक जय हे भारत भाग्य विदाता पंजाब सिंध गुजरात मराठा द्राविड उत्कल बंगा विंध्य हिमाचल यमुना गंगा उच्चल जलदि तरंगा तब शुभ नामे जाहे दव शुभ आशीष मांगे गाहे दव जय गादा जन गण मंगल दायक जय हे भारत भाग्य विदाता जय हे जय हे जय हे जय 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 हे